Hey guys, my name is Batsumio, and today I'm excited to say that Ubisoft has finally announced that Rainbow Six Siege is going to be getting another full year of DLC. I don't know about you guys, but this game has quickly become one of my favorite first person shooters in a very long time. I love the gameplay, I love the combat, but I, like many others, were worried that it was going to slowly wither away and die if they didn't continue to support it after this first year of content. Thankfully, we no longer have to worry about that. Uh, this does bring up the question, though, of what kind of content are they going to be bringing to the game? If it's anything like year one, I would imagine that, of course, we're going to be getting free maps. I mean, that's pretty much a given. But are they going to continue on with their policy of adding in two new operators every couple of months, bringing us eight new unique operators? If that's true, I have no idea how they're going to be able to pull this off. Some people bring up the argument that games like Dota, League of Legends, or Overwatch are able to bring in a lot of new characters to the game every couple of months, and it works just fine for them. The problem is, is that Rainbow Six Siege is not like those games. Sure, it has class-based shooters, there are different classes that have unique abilities, but at the end of the day, it's more grounded in reality. And while we are getting more into the territory of sci-fi, we'll get to that here in a second, the new Echo Operator, he's got a camouflage drone that actually has a cloaking device to it, and so maybe that's their way of kind of skirting around the issue, but at the end of the day, it revolves around using assault rifles, SMGs, and carbines to be able to kill your enemy. You can only go so far into the realm of unbelievable until mechanics just get ridiculous, and so I'm going to be really interested to see how they handle bringing in new operators. And so if I had to take a guess, there's probably going to be less of an emphasis in year two on adding in new operators. I'm sure it's still going to happen, but it may not happen as frequently. Now this also brings up the question, well, if we're not getting new operators, then how are they going to be able to sell the new season pass? If you're not aware, if you already own the current season pass, it does not go on over into year two. You have to buy another one because that sustains the development of the game, but what's going to be the incentive for buying this season pass if you're not getting all these new operators? That's the biggest reason why a lot of people bought it, and so if they don't have eight new ones, how else are they going to be able to incentivize you to make that purchase? If I had to take a guess, it's going to be these elite skins. With season four, we're already getting a preview of this where certain operators are getting elite skins that are completely different from their normal outfits. Uh, here's an example of Sledge. We've got Thermite. There's also a Capkin one. Those are the ones that we know right now. And if they continue on with this, if they give it to premium members or if they give it to season pass owners, uh, that might be another way to entice people to make that purchase. Uh, all in all though, this news makes me incredibly excited and I cannot wait to see where they go with it. Even if there's just more of an emphasis on new maps and we only get maybe one new operator every couple of months, I'm still going to be one happy camper. As long as they continue to support the game with DLC and patches, patches is a big thing to fix all the bugs and glitches like they have with year one, I think this game has a lot of staying power. Uh, we also learned more about the two new operators coming with the Red Crow DLC, and the first one I want to talk about is Echo. Echo is going to be a force to be reckoned with. He's on the defensive team, and the way that he works is that he has a drone. So this is the first defensive drone that we have access to in Rainbow Six Siege, but that drone also has the ability to fly up to the ceiling and go invisible. After a couple of seconds, it will camouflage into its environment. It has like a cloaking device, making it nearly impossible for the offensive team to see it. If that wasn't enough, this is basically an improved Valkyrie camera, but you only get one of them. If that wasn't enough, this drone also has the capability of stunning the attacking team. Now, the stun mechanic isn't like the flashbang, where if you get flash, your screen goes white and you have no idea what's happening around you. The stun mechanic basically disorients your screen where you can still sort of see where you are if you want to you can run out of the room to try and flee the enemy but you're not going to be able to line up a headshot against someone unless you're very very lucky and so if the offensive team is pushing in towards the objective room they just breach from the outside and there is this drone directly above that entry and he stuns anyone that goes on in as long as you're communicating with your teammates which is a key component uh the offensive team is going to have a very challenging time getting anywhere near that objective and so I'm really curious to see how this guy is going to play out when we finally get our hands on him. If he's amazing and he becomes one of the best defensive picks, then I have a suspicion that IQ is now going to become infinitely more important. Thing is, though, is that we said the same thing about IQ when Valkyrie was first introduced. Oh, Valkyrie can throw cameras everywhere, then why wouldn't you want to play as IQ to find those cameras? It never really worked out that way. And so I'm really interested to see if IQ is finally going to have her role in Rainbow Six Siege with the introduction of Echo. Uh, we also learned more about the upcoming offensive operator named Habana. 
the way that she works is that she has access to a grenade launcher, very similar to Ash, but the twist on her is that she can actually open up reinforced walls. Now the thing is, is that if you use one charge against that wall, it's only gonna open up a very large murder hole. You can't jump on through, but if you want to, you can see into the objective and shoot anyone behind it. If you use two charges against that wall though, you can vault on over much like you would with a thermite charge. The thing is though, is that she has access to three charges. She has the potential to either open up three different holes on three different walls if she desired, or open up one big hole so that your team can vault on in, much like if you only had one thermite charge, and then another hole directly next to it to shoot anyone behind it. She is going to be an incredibly versatile offensive operator. As long as her guns aren't worthless, and I don't think that they're going to be, I would imagine they're at least going to be decent. As long as they're not horrible, she is gonna be a force to be reckoned with. I don't think that she's going to make other operators obsolete. Some people are probably worried that Thermite isn't gonna be useful anymore. Imagine Thermite and her on the same team. The defenders around that objective are just, are screwed. Like there's, there's, there's gonna be so many holes. There's gonna be so many ways the offensive team is gonna be able to shoot and flank around and catch them by surprise. It's, it's gonna be challenging. And so I'm curious to see how she's gonna play out. I think she's gonna be a lot of fun, but I have a suspicion that she's going to be very powerful. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Give me your thoughts on what we discussed. Are you just as enthusiastic as I am for the announcement of year two? Are you looking forward to the new operators? Let me know down below. Uh, but yeah, guys, until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.